Let's go. And remember, I want Yellowhawk alive. That's an order. I'll live to see you die beneath my steel, Custer. At 24, he had been the youngest general in the Civil War. Within five years, he had been reduced in rank and sent west to be forgotten. But he was not the kind of man to let the world forget. His name, George Armstrong Custer. Sleeping better than on that red devil's behind bars. Company! Halt! Dismount! Dismount! Sergeant, form a detail to guard the prisoner. Yes, sir. Daniels! Corby! Smith! Guard detail! There you are. That'll make walking a bit more comfortable. Hoovy, his customer is bringing in Yellowhawk. Sergeant! Sturdy, murderous swine! You kill women and kids, will you? Let me out! What's wrong with you, man? Kill him. Easy. Hold him till he comes to his senses. 
Take him over there and cool him off. No. My money, General, I'd let Tuvi finish him. Tuvi didn't know it was you he hit, Colonel. I know that, Sergeant. I won't press any charges. See it, hut! Company B, 7th Cavalry. Reporting in from foraging detail, sir. So I see, Colonel Custer. Captain Keogh, take charge of the prisoner. Aye, sir. Mr. Custer, I'll see you in my office. Now. Company, lead off! General, looks like the old man's in a mood to do some sprightly chewing. <laughs> Now, you listen to me, Colonel Custer. I expect you to carry out the orders that you've been given. Yes, sir. And when you've been given orders to forge for wood, those orders do not include acting on your own initiative and engaging the hostile tribes in combat. Yes, sir. I warn you, Colonel Custer. If you continue to pursue your policy of disobedience, you'll give me no other choice except to recommend your dismissal from the service. I understand, General Terry. I hope you do. About Yellowhawk, sir. Well, what about him? Feeling will run high against him here, sir. Sergeant Tuvey's family was on the stage he attacked last spring. Tuvey was on the detail that found them. What was left of them. We can't keep Yellowhawk here at Fort Hayes, sir. And I'm aware of that. He'll be taken to Fort Riley and tried for his crimes there. And hanged, if I'm not badly mistaken. I request the General's permission for the 7th to escort Yellowhawk to Fort Riley. Not granted. How many times must I remind you, Colonel Custer, of the duties assigned to the 7th? Garrison, labor and foraging details. Yes, sir. General? Rough time, sir. Well, no rougher than usual. Yellowhawk keeps saying he wants to see you, General. Sergeant Tuvi, how is he? James B's putting a little red eye inside him. Tuvi will soon quiet down, but he'll still kill Yellowhawk the first chance he gets. Well, Tuvi needs a change of scenery. Something to get his mind off his memories. Captain, you'll see that he gets the mail wagon run to Fort Wallace. A week's run to Fort Wallace, That'll get him away. Aye, sir. And Yellow Hawk will be gone when he comes back. General, I get the feeling that Yellow Hawk ain't none too happy about being here with us. Open up. to see me? You take no chances, do you, Custer? Only those I have to. This must be said. There will be another day for us, Custer. Perhaps. But how many other days will there be for the Cheyenne Nation? More than a man could count in a thousand lifetimes. The sun is setting on your people, Yellow Hawk. Your eyes see too clearly not to know that. And yet you murder and raid when you know there'll be reprisals against your people. Reprisals? You take our land. You drive us from everything we have owned. You despoil our women. You destroy our ways. And you call it reprisals, Custer. For what? Did we bring the white man to this land? Did we ask for this war? Yes. When you break the treaties that might bring peace, you ask for war. Does the white man keep these treaties any better? Treaties are made by men, and sometimes carried out by fools. If your treaties mean nothing to you, how can they mean anything to us? Nothing can stop the growth of this country. Not the Cheyenne, not the Sioux, 
No power on earth can prevent the two halves of this nation joining together. The treaties, with all their faults, are all we have. We must try and make them work. No. Perhaps we cannot win, but we can die like men and make you pay a price you will remember. How is Tuba Maloney today? Very well, Colonel Custer, sir. Very good, Trooper. Now, as you were. Good afternoon, Tia. Good afternoon, Jocko. Where's Janie? Well, oh, the missus stayed at the farm with the baby. These are troubled times, Jocko. Aye, that they are. But that murdering heathen Yellowhawk will do no more raiding or burning. And just the same, it might be a good idea if you and the missus were to move a little closer to Fort Hayes for a while. No rampaging Indians driving me off my own land. Well, there's a patrol going out your way in about an hour. At least you'll have company on your drive home. It would only make me an hour later getting back home. So I'll be going on alone. If you're past the farm, Jenny will be keeping a pot of coffee hot for you. I'll make it my duty to call. Irene. Goodbye, Trooper. Soldiers don't kiss. Sorry, Trooper. We'll be watching for you. Bye. Nothing, Lieutenant. You know your business. Don't worry, Colonel. We'll take good care of your prize, Pigeon. Carry on. Wagon detail! Go ahead! Ho! Of it all, Joe. Now, since when ain't I always did just that? Old Sutler's telling me you was looking for a new knife, and these just come in, and so I figured better bring them on over. You can have your pick. 
Now, this one here is a nice little old light skinning knife. But this one, it's patterned after Mr. Bowie's Texas toothpick. Either one of them ought to do the job. This is too light. I think I'll keep the Bowie knife. General, I know you're just a chomping at the bit to get back out into the field again. But you got to admit that garrison duty's got its advantages. Fellas sure apt to hang on to his hair a whole lot longer doing it. The frontier will stay untamed just that much longer. Assuming that the frontier ever will be tamed, which I have my doubts about. It will someday, Joe. In spite of savages like Yellow Hawk and fools like President Grant's brother. Now, them's awful strong words, General. If I was you, I wouldn't go a spouting them off just anywhere. It's time someone shouted it everywhere. Too much of the blame is being placed on the Indians, when the fault is as much our own. Start. It might take days to find him. If I took the seven that struck north, we could cut his trail and drive him back towards you and the fifth. Yellowhawk's escaping, sir, will be told over every tribal campfire in the territory. It'll encourage other hostiles to attack us. Custer, that's enough. I don't think it is, sir. He blames me for what happened to him here. And he'll do anything to get his revenge. Your point? Why not give him what he wants? Use me to bait a trap for him. Mr. Custer, the Indian wars are not a personal vendetta. Yellowhawk thinks they are. If you permit me to take the seventh into the Wichita's and then follow later with the fifth, there will be an expedition into the Wichita mountains, Mr. Custer, by the fifth cavalry. Sooner or later, we'll find Yellowhawk and we will bring him in. But it's me he wants, sir. Mr. Custer, you will deploy your companies of the seventh on patrol from Fort Riley to Fort Wallace. You'll maintain that patrol until I relieve you of it. Miles from any chance of action. Exactly. Well, if it's any consolation, General. Patrolling beats the devil out of cutting and hauling wood. This horse was the most beautiful horse I ever saw. She was a sable with a flax mane and tail. Tension! Sergeant, I want B Company ready for field duty in one hour. We're seeing action, sir. I don't expect it, Sergeant. You take a patrol to Fort Wallace and return. A patrol? Blast it, sir. We just got back from a patrol. Yes, sir. As you were. A patrol duty. All right, you buzzards, move! Move! California, I'm beginning to think that you take better care of that mule than I do my horse. That's because she's a better saddle animal than that big jug-headed thing that you're riding. Do you mean to tell me that a man, a grown man, in his right mind would prefer a mule to a horse? Well, I ain't so ignorant that I'd try to tell a Johnny Reb anything. But now, if you used to ask me, I'd say that a mule could outdo a horse any day of the week. 
Would you like to back up that loose talk with some hard cash? Well, I sure would like to oblige you, but I promised the general that I wouldn't go taking advantage of any of his greenhorn soldier boys. <laughs> California, you really mean that about your mule, I mean? Now, boy, you know I never was one to exaggerate. Ha <laughs> ha! I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take the commonest old everyday mule that ever come down the pike, and it'll be smarter than the best horse you ever saw. Did you ever see a mule get spooked and run into anything and cripple itself? No, by golly. Oh, California, how you do lie. Well, you know that dang mule is too darn stupid to be spooked. Now, you see, Rio, this old mule's even smart enough to fool a feller like Bustard. Not that that takes no great show of intelligence. California, how you do embroider the facts. Not to mention twisting them a bit. Now, I got two months paid due, and I'm Phineas willing to... Phineas Barnum would have loved you, Sergeant. I'll give you some good advice, Trooper. Don't bet against a mule, and never bet against California Joe. Now, General, you know it's again my principles to take advantage of my feller man. Except if his name's Bustard. <laughs> I'd appreciate a little livelier tune there, Captain. California, your mule's got more principles than you have. <laughs> well, here we are. Miles from any hostels. You know, General Terry reminds me of some little fella that's always a picking a fight with somebody twice his size and then insists on fighting him with his good hand behind his back. Now, Joe, you've been around the Army long enough to know that a general's never wrong. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Terry's just following orders. All right, Colonel. Yes, I'm fine. It's a good thing that 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 Indian missed. That campfire at my back, I was a perfect target. That brave intended to miss me, didn't he, Joe? Well, that's one way of looking at it. However, on the other hand, uh... I'll double the guard. I've never seen an arrow like this before. Well, that's cause. Uh... Cheyenne, of course, but what else does it mean? Well, I reckon you might as well know. That's a death error. When a chief of the Cheyenne Nation hates another one so bad that, well, one or the other of them ain't gonna stay alive much longer, why, he lets this other fella know by sending him one of them fancy medicine errors. Yellow Hawk? Let him see his marks on it. And he's not in the Wichita's at all. to the death. What if a man who receives the challenge doesn't accept it? Well, it can't be did according to Cheyenne thinking. Phil, it sends that error makes doggone sure of that. How? Well, he generally starts in by killing off the other fella's kinfolks one by one in cold blood. And he don't quit till that fella rides out on the prairie and meets him. I see. Of course, I... Uh, you ain't a Cheyenne, and you ain't got no family out here to worry about, so that doggone error don't mean a darn thing. I better go take care of that mule and get some shut eye. You better get some sleep yourself, General.
I wish I'd killed you that day at the fort. I'll give you another chance. Cut him free. Give him your knife. a day a part of my seat in that saddle and I'm begging the colonel's pardon. No need to, Sergeant. I feel the same way. I think I'll take a look-see up on top, General. Well, I'll go with you, California. Come on. That's Tooby's mail wagon. He's dead. Tuvi's dead. Just sitting here. Dead. Rigged him up to sit in the mail wagon and send him back as a present. How do you know that, General? He stuck this in his glove. ain't gonna quit until he forces you out after him. I'd like nothing better than to oblige him. But he's a figuring on picking the time and the place. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Start that team of mules back to Fort Hayes. They know the way. They won't stop till we get there. Yes, sir.
that's Yellowhawk. Man up, as you were. Sir, you mean you're not going after that Red Devil? That's exactly what he wants us to do. Mount the troop and continue the patrol. Prepare them all. Yellowhead, run away. She is a coward. He is no coward. He is too clever to do what we expect him to do. There will be time to continue this game later. Now there is more important work to be done. Make camp here tonight. Hey, look yonder. That ain't no brush park. It's a farm over that way. Hey, it's a war party, sure as shooting. But a gallop! Keep an eye open. This was Jocko Maloney's place. Wish we could have gotten here sooner. It's a little trooper's camp. Yellowhawk. This ain't Yellowhawk Cheyenne. This here's an old Lala Sioux. Yellowhawk's escaping will touch off every tribe in the plains. Yeah, and it didn't take him too doggone long to do it, neither. Come here and take a look at this, General. This here's big medicine. Now, you read Sioux writing from right to left, moving in a circle this way. Now, this here's the same we'll pursue, and these two figures here, that means brothers. This one here with the marks on it, that means cut arm. That's the Sioux word for Cheyenne. What does it mean? Well, it means nothing but trouble. It appears as how it's an invite to join forces in a big fight. I see this figure here, one waving. That means come. This one here, this uh, bow and arrow, that means big battle, big fight. Where? Well, let's see now. Uh-huh. War bonnet. And this here's a symbol for pass through the mountains. War bonnet gorge. That's down in the Wichita's. That's where General Terry was headed. And these blue figures? Well, them soldiers. Many soldiers. Why is one upside down? Well, that means soldiers, too. That's dead soldiers. Prepare them out. Would the general mind saying where we be going? War bun and gorge, Captain Keel. Ignoring General Terry's orders. Objections, Mr. Keel. Forward! At a gallop! Ho! <laughs> There's the column. Why, where they're at, the only pass they can get through lies 20 miles to the west of them. It won't be to War Bonnet Gorge much before noon tomorrow. Mount up! Thank you. 
as good a place as any to spend the night, General. Or what's left of it. Sergeant. Yes, my home. Out of Wolf on a gorge. Oh, not more than an hour's ride. Sergeant, we'll make camp here tonight. No fire and no noise. Yes, sir. All right. Rub down your horses. Give them a half a quart of oats and a canteen of water. Something on your mind, Trooper? Yes, sir. Well, speak up. Well, sir, it's about tomorrow. You nervous? Oh, no more than usual. But that's quite a bit. I mean, I know what you mean, Trump. And between us, I always feel the same way myself. Really? A man without fear is a natural-born fool. Yes, sir. I think I'll take a swing around camp. I'd like to know who my neighbors are. <laughs> well, you got nothing to worry about. The way you smell, no self-respecting Sue would come within 10 miles of you. <laughs> hey, General. See something plum pretty? That's got to be the biggest Cheyenne camp I ever seen. I bet there's two thousand, maybe three thousand braves. If they ride through War Bonnet Gorge tomorrow and join forces with the Sioux. Why, Terry and the Fifth won't have a ghost of a chance. Folks back in the states will be reading about the biggest dead blame massacre that ever happened. Well, we're gonna make sure that they don't get through that gorge before the Fifth gets there to stop them. I'll be mighty interested to see how you're going to keep them from it. With only 15 men, 16 counting me. Comes their advanced scouts, and Terry and the fifth ain't here yet. How near do you think Terry is? Oh, not more than five, ten minutes away. You've got to stop them here before they join the Sioux. Take cover in those rocks and fight on foot.
got more company. Fixing to do, Colonel. Get us those five minutes. We meet for the last time, Custer. You'll murder no more women and children. I'll not keep you waiting. Was sending me this death arrow the boast of a Cheyenne squaw? Or are you warrior enough to fight me alone?
I'm not going to ask you why you're here, Colonel Custer. I'm only going to say that I am very tired, and I'm going to bed. And if I find you anywhere but where I assigned you to duty in the morning, I am blasted well going to court-martial you. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I intend to cite you and your men for gallantry, Colonel Custer, for what you did here. Thank you, sir. But that doesn't change a thing between us. Do you understand me, sir? Yes, sir. Dismissed. Sergeant, mount the troop. Would the colonel mind telling me what for? Have you forgotten, Sergeant? We have a patrol to finish. Yes, sir. Prepare to move. Bound. I think the men could stand a bit of music, Mr. Keogh. Forward. 